Uh, and welcome to Roundup Overtime. Uh, it's an extension of this, the podcast that we already do, where we'll be getting some additional interviews, uh, guests, and anything that we can't quite fit into the normal show. Um, today, I'm joined by Bodonka from Paradox, and we've also got their coach, Zertz. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for, for joining me. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Yeah, doing good. Cool. Um, i got to start first, uh, Bodonka. Um, who else, if, if other than yourself, who else do you think would really rock a trilby? Oh, well, judging by Twitter recently, Fiend. I've yeah. seen him in, uh, yeah, I've seen that clip of him playing guitar with a fedora on. So I think, you know, fedora is pretty trilby adjacent. So I think he'd be, he'd look good in one, I think. Hell yeah. You, you love to see it, I guess. Um, we'll jump into some, some actual CS, I guess. So uh, you guys are yet to drop um, a match this year, I believe. Uh, you've dropped maps here and there, but you're like 9-0, and I think, across Prem and ANZ champs. Um, yeah. In your in your premier group, you're still yet to play Direwolves, but are you confident you can get through your group undefeated? Is that the goal? Oh yeah, well obviously it's the goal. I think def I think we can definitely beat them. They kind of rinsed Chiefs the other night, which was a bit unexpected. I thought that would have been a lot closer of a game, but I'm still not super worried. I think it'll be close. I think it'll probably be the same difficulty as the game against Chiefs, even though Die Wolves in the head to head did rinse Chiefs. I think it should probably be fast just based on like scrim results and pass results. I'd say it'll probably be around the same difficulty and we beat Chiefs. So I don't see why we can't beat Die Wolves. Cool. Um, with ANZ champs, you guys were obviously one of the invited teams. Were you expecting that? How did that feel? I think we were expecting it. We'd done some investigation into the last season, um, which was a while ago now, but we determined that essentially every team, even though we only came like seventh, eighth or something, I think every other team that placed above us outside of Chiefs or to Die Wolves had actually died yeah. or been, had players banned because of E6. So we were the only team that actually had core, like core three players, I think, left standing outside of Rooster. Well, actually, we weren't sure if it was going to be off core three or core two because yeah. Rooster still would have been eligible. So they would have been in above us, but it was core three. So we just got in basically on a technicality off of everyone else getting banned or dying. So yeah. I think we, we did expect it. Okay, cool. Um, going into it, uh, your expectations similar to Premier, play very well. I imagine getting out of groups is like, or getting out of the Swiss at least, is like, you know, going to be top of the priorities for now. Um, do, you, do you have any red flags? What are your sort of, what's ANZ champs looking like for, for Paradox? I think our goal is definitely to make it into the, if I recall correctly, it's like Swiss and then it's playoffs and then it's finals or yeah. something. Yeah, when there's the a double bracket form. after Swiss. Yeah. yeah. I think the goal would definitely be make it into finals. We've come really close uh, in like the playoff stage. I, I guess you would call it the playoff stage of the earlier seasons. I think it's always disappointing. We'd always have a close game or an upset game in there and that would kind of just fizzle out into nothing, like no actual meaningful result, which is always really disappointing. But I think, yeah, I think... This season, definitely aiming for finals. Not sure if it'd be a land or not with all the COVID yeah. situation, but it'd be good if it was. But yeah, I think definitely finals. Of yeah. course. Um, but I'll go from your perspective, um, what is the impact of having um, both a coach and Zerz in particular as the coach? Ooh. <laughs> I throw Zerz under the bus here. He does nothing. He's useless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I think having a coach, it's really good to have like an impartial, I guess you could say sixth person because obviously in my eyes, every, as the IGL, everything I do is correct outside of some, you know, like glaring mistake that I, I would notice. So it kind of is hard, I think, to develop as a player when you're calling because in your own head, which is how you're playing, you're always making the right decision because it's, you know, you're the one calling the shots. So having Zertz actually being there and saying, hold on a sec, Dunk, what you just did was incredibly dumb. You're an idiot. We got <laughs> we got to rethink this. Actually has done a lot. And I think individually as a player, I've gotten a lot better playing with Zertz, watching, just to have someone, you know, they're pulling up my mistakes. I think as well, it makes it a lot easier as well. It shares the load. Um, yeah. In the past, when we didn't have a coach, it would be, mainly just me coming to practice with stuff. So our development of new things and sort of, I guess, anti-stratting of other teams was a lot more dependent on me. So if I was busy that week or whatever, we just wouldn't have any new stuff or we wouldn't go into a game with as much preparation as we have with Zerts now. I think 
having Zertz in particular as a coach as well, it's really good. He puts in a lot of work. I think he's he's really good hype man for the team as well. Like he can get us all fired up, and at the same time he can calm us all down as well if we're getting too rowdy, if we're getting tilted at each other or whatever. He's really good, like people person. So I'd say that's that's his strengths. Um, Zertz, from your perspective, what do you see your like primary role within the team as? Um, I'm definitely, I just feel like, um, a bit of everything. I guess yes. I'm a bit of a mentor. I'm someone who's like Donk said, I'm a bit of a, uh, a people person. I've always been, um, I've always been like that. I've always been good at reading the room and, and making friends as such. And, and, uh, in my line of work, when I used to work, uh, at a juvie, it was working with, uh, a lot of different personalities and a lot of different, um, attitudes and people. And so you've got to be really, um, understanding and you've got to be really cautious and careful but i'm able to work out in our team um who needs what and yeah. i think that's the the main thing as a coach in my eyes in any sport you have to be um very understanding on, on how people work as individuals uh for instance you know there's a play there's a you know certain players that need to be nurtured or need to be um given time or let them think their own game out and then go to them. Um, but yeah. there's also there, there's also other people that you can pull up on the spot, tell them they're doing something wrong and, and they'll either take, you know, they usually take that on the chin and, and they can roll with it. So um, I guess I'm, I'm good at, uh, I guess, working out, especially in our team, who needs what uh, at, at certain times, whether that be a, a private message or, or spoken in front of the group uh, as a learning, a learning situation. Um, but I also do put in, you know, a lot of effort outside the game. So I'm bringing in new strats all the time. I'm showing a lot of different utility. Um, I'm helping out, you know, especially Donk and that calling front on whether it's the right decision to um, have go certain places and stuff like that. I do a lot of demo reviews with the guys, um, especially in our officials uh, of things we've done extremely well or um, pointing out issues that we've made um, mistakes either as a team or individually um, pointing those out and, and trying to make us better as a whole, I guess, what's uh helped and i think i personally think has helped the team get off to a good start this year is is the boys trust in me and i feel like they have in some way taken on um a bit of my my game plan and my fundamentals that i brought to the team i've definitely um brought in a lot of new stuff i feel um that maybe wasn't quite there it was there but it wasn't being utilized as such um and them pay taking it on board and actually learning from it and and taking what i say um uh, with respect and and actually going ahead with it, whether they believed in it or not, um, I feel has taken us further ahead in just our progression as a team. Um, I feel like if you go back and watch demos, um, probably at the start of last year or midway through last year to the start of this year, I feel like our team play um, mainly has taken taken a big leap forward. You'll yeah. see, you, and you should see, hopefully in the future, less and less of those individual mistakes that yeah right. Um, made like overextending and stuff yeah hopefully you see a lot less of that in the future <laughs> but weird stuff we're working on without awesome. getting too in, in depth yeah yeah um from my perspective this team's really interesting because you've got a good mix of like younger players that are sort of um not as experienced coming up um don't have all the bad habits i guess as well as like the other side of that and then you've also got some more regional kind of like veterans uh i particularly look at herbs he's been around forever um is that like a good combination of players that you want coming into a team? Does that work really well for you as the coach? Yeah, well, yeah, I guess it's a good question. Um, I would say we are getting a lot of young players, but they've come out of a scene where they've um, picked up bad habits through a lot of pugging. Yeah. Uh, and also uh, just playing in amateur sides leading up because everyone has to go through that stage where you're playing in amateur sides and you you do, you play like an amateur and you come across and you have, you carry across those bad habits. But um, the thing is uh, them being so young, it is good at this time that I'm able to teach them the reasons why those are bad habits and um, essentially gr helping them grow out of those and become um, a different sort of player where they can acknowledge um, what they're actually doing in the game um, and the, every single move that they make in a game or their positioning or, how they throw utility um, affects the game as a whole and affects the rest of the teammates. I guess the young players, that's really good. But players like Herbs and stuff like that, I and and essentially Luke, who hasn't been around as long as Herbs, but he's experienced in a sense that um, 
he doesn't make as many um, mistakes and he actually has a very good understanding of the game and including Badonka. I guess it's um, I don't have to work so much with those guys. Yeah, right. uh, I, I'm able to focus my energy on on helping develop these young, you know, stars essentially that can frag really well, like Versa and Danger. Um, but now it's uh, applying that mental side to those guys. I think will help them and help the team excel uh, incredibly. If we can get those guys on the ability where we can get their mental consistent, um, we'll become an extremely good side. So yeah. Um, and w- what do you feel uh, like? What's the X factor of this squad to you, at least? I think the X factor is the mix of um, aggression slash unpredictability, yeah. mixed with uh, potentially really good fundamentals, really good CS when we need to be uh, when, when we need to have it, and um, locking down our protocols and playing them more often than not. I think that's our X factor. Is actually it's hard to know when we're going to be in your face and it's hard to know when we're actually um, just going to fundamentally outplay. Yeah. Right. But Duncan, do you, do you agree? Or do you also yeah. think there's like a, anything extra with that? No, I'd, I'd agree with that. It's um, I think we're really good at switching up the pace. I think that can be very off putting for a lot of teams to play against, especially when it's kind of like, I don't know, let's the first half of a game, we're just running at you like apes, zero respect. And then you, you adapt to that. And by the time you've adapted to it, we're just playing like standard again. Yeah, right. And then it's kind of just like, you're waiting for us to just run at you and we just don't, that sort of thing. I think it's, I think we're really good at mixing it up between playing, God, my camera's just looking for something. <laughs> it's not there. It's uh, where I think we're really good at playing very, in, very disrespectfully. And then also immediately just switching back up into a more standard style, which is what Zertz was saying. So yeah, I would agree. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have any sort of secrets with your map pool, but um, from my perspective is there's, you know, you stick clear of overpass and sometimes vertigo, unless you do want to play it. Uh, Cause you did the other night and I saw a post-match interview, but well, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Um, how are you feeling about your map pool uh, right now? Oh yeah. I'll jump in. I think, yeah, I, yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll say our map pool, we can play any map. We can honestly play, yeah, yeah. we can play any map, whether or not we can, um, beat the best of the best on every map that's a that's a that's a different, different question. story a different story but on a whole um we can be extremely competitive on every single map and that's our goal is to have uh where we where we don't have a um an insta ban okay cool. and i think that makes us extremely strong going into finals and stuff like that where you you will then have to ban your weakest map and we can play whatever we'll play our we'll play our best maps against you always because you you don't have the ability to ban our best map against us because we'll pick your weakness yeah right. Um, the the Vertigo thing I was alluding to, I, I saw that you guys. I think it was the was it the Riot series. Yeah. Um, and Zertz, I think you said in the post match you weren't actually sure why you picked it. Do you guys just sometimes uh, go for the the cheese pick to really try and catch people out? Like, is that that unpredictability sort of coming in, but from a veto point of view? Um, I think. I actually can't remember whose idea it was to pick Vertigo. I think I was definitely saying it, but um, I think we. Hmm, it's kind of hard to know what was going through our heads. I think I, we'd yeah. we'd looked into I it. I think they didn't play Vertigo was our logic, and then at the same time we were kind of like, we sort of wanted to just use this as, I guess, kind of a practice in game <laughs> to yeah, just yeah. see see how we can do on Vertigo and officials, and just see if uh, it's something that we'd be comfortable picking in the future. And then we uh, we played really badly <laughs> and lost. So I, I I remember it. Yeah, and it was it was like we'd switched up a lot of things on Vertigo. We'd practiced it like very mildly on that that week because we'd uh, we'd looked at a certain team and we wanted to adapt that style. Um, yeah. And there was a few people that didn't quite understand exactly the the roles that we went to done in that. We went back and ref- refined it after that game. And I I do remember the conversation going into that. It was it was solely about look. And we, I think it was a team discussion. Some were like, oh, we, I don't think we should be playing Vertigo. It's probably not the best map to go for. But the whole thing is we're versing a team like Riot. No disrespect to those guys at all. Um, I'm, you know, a good friend with one of them in there. But um, we thought when they were playing with a Shockwave, they may not have practiced their Vertigo. And it yeah, might right. be something where we can go in there and we can practice in an official, essentially, um, whether our stuff works uh, and stuff like that. And we, we found out, you know what, it needs to be re- refined a little bit. And so that's perfect for us. That's like a learning experience. We took the L, but 
uh, in all honesty, we, we went back the next week and our vertigo looked 10 times better because we had a better understanding on yeah. what we were actually doing wrong. So to be fair, it wasn't great for the loss, but it worked out for us. So we're happy. Awesome. Um, do you guys have any messages for the other teams, especially the ones above you, I guess, um, whether it is like, uh, you know, hey, don't pick this map against us because, you know, we'll fuck you up or, um, you know, watch out for, you know, so-and-so. Like, do you have any sort of fighting words for these other teams or are you just going to show show it to them in the server? Don't think, yeah, I don't think there's any fighting words. Um, yeah, last last time we did fighting words before a game, Danger went like 7-26 and 26 against that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that was good we've, we've, we've learned to avoid <laughs> fighting words. Fair. <laughs> yeah. Cool. No, I don't think any fighting words. I think, um, yeah, I think they're all good players. and But especially at this time in AUCS, there's uh, definitely room for us to to be really uh, powerful. So, I don't know. We'll just keep growing and hopefully we surpass them, I guess. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, that's all I've got. So I guess I guess we'll leave it there. But uh, do you guys have any closing sort of messages for whether it's people watching, uh, your family, or, or more importantly, your fans? Fans? I'll leave that to Dunk. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I guess the, the only thing would be is, oh, depending on when this will be released, I don't know if it'll probably be after our ESL it, game tonight, it, won't it'll it? It'll be yeah, after. Yeah. yeah. Well, rewatch the VOD for the ESL game, and I hope that they show the, the photos I sent in because they were really good. <laughs> So <laughs> that's, sure. the me- that's the message. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining me, guys. Um, and uh, be sure to uh, keep an eye out for more content like this on Snowball.